Right, so today we are finally getting around to replacing the FEP on the Anycubic Photon Mono. I took the print tray off the other day and noticed that there was a little bit of resin left behind over here. Um, and it's, it's a tiny amount, but if you've watched the, the video on the print of the optics mounts, You'll have seen there's actually a defect caused by those two little spots. And those two little spots are from a leak in the FEP. So it's time to replace the FEP. So this is obviously set from the exposure to UV. And so the critical bit here is not to scratch this. Um, so just gently ease it off. I often find just using a gloved finger can get most of it off. Certainly not an implement of any sort. It's a little bit of patience. Don't rush it. There we go. See it comes off. Just keep applying keep applying IPA and just gently ease it off with your nail under a gloved finger. Or rather, under a glove. And let's get a little bit more IPA. Again, just be really patient and gentle. The last thing you want to do is damage the screen. It is important to get this absolutely flat because this is also, this will otherwise, even this tiny bump will dent the FEP and just lead to another hole. But also, it makes leveling difficult. Even this tiny, tiny amount um, will impact the leveling of your build plate. Okay, that looks good. Um, there's a tiny little blemish on the surface still, but I'll come back and give that another round with a proper lint-free kind of optical cloth before I reinstall the, the tray. Right, so here's the vat removed, and you may just be able to see a blemish over there. That is the defect that we need to deal with. I'll try and do a macro shot to give a little bit more clarity. So here's a, here's a close-up of the blemish, um, what looks like a blemish, but there's actually a pin brick hole there. There's a little bit of cured resin which blocks the hole. Um, and if you take that off, then the FEP leaks and you, res you end up with the little blemish that we saw on the screen. Or if you leave it there, then you end up with a defect in the part like you saw in the last video. Right, let's start replacing the FEP by first taking out the old one. Um, in all transparency, I have never done this before, um, so I am learning as you are observing. Um, what I do know is the VAT body is made of plastic, and so I wouldn't start with power tools. Um, get a 2mm Allen key, these are metric, 2mm, um, or a you know, screwdriver, but do it by hand. Two millimeters is roughly the same as kind of five sixty fourths. Um, and let's take them all loose by hand. I start with an Allen key just to kind of break the, the initial resistance. And then you can take it out with a screwdriver afterwards. And you can see once you get past that initial resistance, which the Allen key is really helpful for with, with the leverage that it provides, um, they go pretty easily. I've seen some recommend that you check the the frequency of the membrane, um, the audio frequency of the membrane. It's, it's basically a drum and you can see how taut it is by checking the frequency. I downloaded an app on my phone and it seems to produce a range of frequencies between about 
400 hertz and one kilohertz and then nothing really higher than that so it seems that that's kind of the range we would want when we're done but again not particularly scientific okay so that's all loose you can see the membrane starting to be loose already we just take these out right and that looks like that's that so there we go that's the frame off and the membrane is just sandwiched between those two by the looks of it let's have a look at the frame okay so the frame appears to be sandwiched um, or two layers um, which you can see there and the FEP is sandwiched between those two so we need to split this apart I'm just going to try this with a craft knife oh. that's surprisingly difficult okay it seems that some of these are actually bonded with this Maybe this wasn't designed to be replaced. I must say I did not realize that this was a tank with a non-replaceable FEP or at least that the FEP had to be bought as a module. There we go. Okay, so I think in theory, if we clean this up a little bit, we should be able to then put some new holes in and screw it back together. Okay, let's start by marking out roughly where we want the screws to be. Um, so somewhere in that range. Somewhere there. Somewhere there. Thank mm -hmm. you. Start by drilling out a 2.5 millimeter hole. Okay, I'm going to tap those, screw it together, and then do the rest of the holes. So the frame now needs a 3 millimeter hole and a counter sink. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, let's drill the rest of the holes and then do the rest of the tapping and let's go from there. Don't make a mistake here. The first hole you drill is the smaller drill bit. You may have had the clearance drill bit in your drill from drilling the clearance holes. Don't be tempted to use that. This is the two and a half millimeter. I'm using M3 screws, um, so this is a two and a half millimeter bit. 
for the tapping hole and then we'll come back with a 3mm hole should actually use 3.2 for a little bit of clearance um, for the rest. Okay, now let's take it apart. Do the three more holes. By the way, these plastic threaded holes are never going to last for hundreds of cycles, but for the five or ten FEP replacements that I will probably end up doing on this printer, they're fine. Okay, we remove the base. Now we do the clearance hole. Okay, the cover plate seems to be okay. Now we need to tap all the holes. Again, you could power tap this with a cordless drill. Don't be impatient, do it by hand. I bought these off Amazon. I have no idea if they're any good. Um, let's see. It comes pretty well packaged. Okay, we now need to make some holes in the FEP. Um, it's got two protective sheets on either side, so we'll do that with the two protective sheets. Then we will remove the protective sheet, fit it, and let's hope it works. I suppose a more effective way to do this may have been to use a hot soldering iron tip, but let's see. Okay, so now all the holes are drilled. Um, let us see if we can get this to work. We just need to get it clean so we don't end up damaging the FEP in the process. Peeling off the protective layer. Remember, there's a layer on two sides. Now, if all goes according to plan, this should fit. And we should be able to screw it together. I have no idea if there's a better or worse sequence in which to tighten these. I'm basically doing diagonally opposite corners. And then of course there's still no guarantee this will actually work when we fit it to the tray. The stresses of fitting it to the tray may just be too much. I'm just snugging these corners down, I'm not tightening. Uh, I want to do a fairly even tighten 
around the perimeter. It's sounding tight. Okay, now we start to get some truth. Let's see as we go around and tighten this up how it behaves. Missing one. As I'm going around, I'm basically just taking up all of the slack in each successive screw that is developed from tightening the adjacent one. None of these are bottomed out yet. I'm literally just snugging them down incrementally. Apparently the commercial replacement, the third party tanks, all have steel rings which make the replacement a lot easier and maybe at some point I will make that or actually it's probably just cheaper to buy a third party tank. They go for about 20 odd dollars on Amazon. Again, don't be in a hurry. Take your time. Have patience. Okay, and it looks like we are done. This is a fairly high surface area print, um, so I'm hoping it's a good test of the FEP. Okay, and there we have it. Looks like we have a successful build. Okay, this actually looks pretty good. Um, I'm quite happy with that. Good adhesion to the build plates. Great finish on the side that is in contact with the FEP. Overall, this looks pretty good.